Hi, it's Dwyer, GamblersAdvisory.com, a free site. In the comment section of this YouTube video, the description section, are instructions on how to pull us up using your favorite Amazon personal assistant. Let's talk football. I think we can get an edge on the casino on this bet. But first remember, the opinion you should follow should be your own. Just consider this video to be a second opinion from a complete stranger online. Now in the 2018 season, two years ago, Pat Mahomes threw for 5,097 yards. Right? 5,097 yards. Now that's one of the reasons why Pat Mahomes just signed a blockbuster new deal. Right? The other, of course, being that he just won the Super Bowl the following year. But in 2018, only one quarterback, one, in the entire National Football League, threw for more yardage than Pat Mahomes. And that quarterback, and it was the last time he played a full season, Ben Roethlisberger threw for 5,129 yards. Again, that's 5,129 yards. I'll concede. He had Antonio Brown that year. But, understand, he wasn't just slinging the ball and throwing a lot of picks. He actually had a 96.5 quarterback rating. Again, a 96.5 quarterback rating. You're talking about one of football's best quarterbacks. Right? Even today, he's among the highest paid quarterbacks in the league. He's one of those few quarterbacks who have won multiple Super Bowls. I understand he's a little bit older, but people seem to believe in Tom Brady going into next season. Right? By the way, we like the under on the win total for the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. But understand, Tom Brady's several years older than Ben. Also, Ben's been telling people that the surgery he had has removed the pain from his shoulder and that this is the first time in several years, several years, that he's thrown the football without pain. Now let's look at his team. The Steelers last year were 8-8. Eight and eight. This is a year in which Ben got hurt early. They were 8-8. Eight and eight. So, let me give credit where credit's due. On an excellent site, footballoutsiders.com. Again, it's footballoutsiders.com. They break down the numbers and they tell you that the Steelers last year were 32nd in the league in offensive DVOA. In other words, the Steelers were bad offensively last year. Right? Bad. They fell apart without Ben. You might recall Mason Rudolph got involved in that helmet swinging issue. The Steelers were struggling offensively. Right? Levy and Bell gone. Well, understand, defensively, according to FootballOutsiders.com, the Steelers were the third best defense in the National Football League. Right? The third best defense. They were third in DVOA. They were eighth, top third of the league on special teams. Right? Well, let's say you're a pro football focus guy and not a football outsiders guy. What I want you to do is to look up that Steeler defense on Pro Football Focus. Look up the secondary. And you'll find that the Steelers have an elite secondary. Elite. Going into this year. Now let's think about their division for a moment. Right? Joe Burrow, I can tell you he beat me on some college games I bet on last year. I say he beat me. The guy was throwing dimes. I could not believe how accurate he was. I believe Joe Burrow's the truth. But I also believe this is the National Football League. 
He's joined a bad team, and he's a rookie quarterback. This league treats rookie quarterbacks poorly. Right? Joe doesn't know the NFL DBs. I believe Cincinnati's going to struggle. Let's talk about another team. They're loaded from a talent perspective. The Cleveland Browns. They are loaded. I happen to believe in Baker Mayfield. Right? Baker, excellent rookie year. Had his struggles his second year. Here's the problem I have with Cleveland. New head coach. Folks, that places you at a disadvantage versus Mike Tomlin, who's been to multiple Super Bowls. Right? Mike Tomlin's been the Steeler coach forever. He and Ben work well together. There's continuity there. There's leadership there. You don't have any such guarantees this coming year in Cleveland. You have a rookie head coach. I'm sorry, the water's too deep. The other team in the division are the Baltimore Ravens with their own Super Bowl winning head coach, John Harbaugh. Right now, the Ravens are favored to win the division. They should be. They're loaded. They have the reigning MVP, Lamar Jackson. But let me just put it to you this way. Lamar Jackson's never thrown for 5,000 yards in a season. And I'm one of those people who's a skeptic on running quarterbacks. I've seen some guys look spectacular. RG3 lifted the Washington franchise into the playoffs. Looked great doing so. Got banged up. Cam Newton, he's coming off surgery, folks. Right? He's coming off his own surgery. If you look at Cam's numbers, they have not been spectacular. He hasn't passed for 5,000 yards in a season in his career. Right? Cam's that guy who has a hard problem completing 60% of his passes while passing for 4,000 yards in a season. You look at Michael Vick, excellent running quarterback, at times, at other times, not so much. Right? Not so much. I believe his career can best be described as uneven. Right? Ignoring the off-the-field problems. You have some quarterbacks who move. Russell Wilson moves. Aaron Rodgers, when he wants to, moves. Right? But I believe a moving quarterback is different than a running quarterback. You look at the Baltimore Raven offensive scheme, and they have plays designed for Lamar Jackson to run around the corner, beat the defensive end, gain some yards. Right? That's different than the Russell Wilson approach. Russell Wilson is Fran Tarkington. He's moving around the pocket to buy time. Right? His number one goal is to pass the ball down the field. Now if, as he moves around the pocket, suddenly there's nobody in front of him. There's 10, 15 yards of green grass in front of him. Okay, guys like that will take off. I don't consider Lamar Jackson to be that quarterback. I view Lamar Jackson to be more of the RG3, Michael Vick type quarterback. Right? The league has a learning curve. Sooner or later, they figure out how to stop running quarterbacks. Understand, it's the passing quarterbacks who the league has a problem with. Right? Roethlisberger is in his later 30s now. The league still hasn't figured out how to stop him. Right? Drew Brees has had several years, over 4,500 passing yards. The league still doesn't know how to stop him. But the league eventually figures out how to stop almost every running quarterback. Colin Kaepernick. His last year with the 49ers as a starting quarterback won exactly one game. I think he had a 1-10 record or something like that as a starting quarterback for the San Francisco 49ers. 
Right now, that's on the field. Right? That's on the field. So, I think the league starts to catch up with Lamar Jackson. I think that starts to happen this year. Let's face it. If I'm playing against the Baltimore Ravens, right, one of the first things on the blackboard is going to be to stop Lamar Jackson. And, let's face it too, Lamar Jackson isn't really hitting wide receivers that much. A lot of his throws are going to the tight end. Have you noticed that? Right, he's throwing a lot of short stuff. Now that catches you off guard in the middle of a season where you just played a team with a relatively immobile quarterback who's been throwing the ball deep. Then suddenly, you're up against Baltimore and you have a highly mobile quarterback who's throwing real short passes to tight ends. Right? I believe, though, that this year it's going to be a bit different. I agree. The Baltimore Ravens are a threat to win the whole thing. I'll agree with that. But the Pittsburgh Steelers, to me, are the more intriguing play. I believe the Steelers get by Cleveland, rookie head coach, Cincinnati, rookie quarterback, bad team, right? Only one team stands in their way to win the AFC North, and that's the Baltimore Ravens. Would it surprise you to learn that the Steelers are a plus 325? Think about it, a plus 325 simply to win the division. Let me also say this too. Running quarterbacks get hurt, don't they? Eventually, these running quarterbacks start to get banged up. You remember RG3, right? Cam Newton taking inordinate punishment to the point where he started complaining publicly about it. Defensive coordinators start to say, hey, if you're going to be a running back, we're going to treat you like a running back. Let me just tell you, very few running backs make it to 30 as starters in this league. If anything happens to Lamar Jackson, I think the Baltimore Ravens sink. The bet I like are the Pittsburgh Steelers, plus 325. You're being compensated for the risk, folks, to win the AFC North. Let's go further. On futures... I prefer this to over-unders because you can hedge the play later. I think you want to take the Steelers right here to win the AFC. Folks, Ben's back. The team won eight games last year without Ben. <laughs> now you're adding a quarterback who in his last full season threw for more yards. Right? More, more yards in a season than Lamar Jackson ever did than Cam Newton ever did. You're talking about an elite future Hall of Famer quarterback. And of course, you're talking about a head coach who's one of the most successful head coaches in recent NFL history. Folks, you're gonna have to go back several years to find a year where Mike Tomlin was below 500 if one exists. So I like the Steelers. I like the leadership. These are COVID-19 times, right? The preseason is going to be messed with. You're going to have a different protocol this year in furtherance of public safety, right? A coach's authority, his experience is going to matter this year more than most, right? Rookie head coaches, how are they going to control the locker room? Right? A head coach who's won a Super Bowl who <laughs> has years of playoff appearances. Right? Who learned his craft under Tony Dungy years ago. Who has the respect in the locker room. 
where the players know the coach has more credibility with team ownership than they do. Having that kind of coach is going to be a huge bonus. Huge. For both the Steelers and the Ravens. Right, so, you add in the third best defense in the league. You add in that secondary. With this quarterback. And it's astonishing. It's astonishing. That folks are giving this team long odds like a plus 325 simply to win a division that has the team that just picked first in the NFL draft as one of the other three teams. Right? Let me say this too about Lamar Jackson. I don't mean to diss the guy. I have a lot of respect for Lamar Jackson. He's that rare athlete. Very rare. Right? Cam falls in this group who won the Heisman in college and who was NFL MVP. And he's done it early. But understand, two years ago, teams spent their offseason preparing for Joe Flacco. Then in the middle of the season, they switched it up to Lamar Jackson. Defenses weren't ready. Right? They didn't know Lamar. They couldn't handle his speed and agility. Last year, right, Lamar shined. He had a full season. He had an MVP season where he was simply remarkable. Teams weren't ready. But now the Ravens aren't going to sneak up on anyone. They were the one seed at the end of last season. They're not going to sneak up on anyone. Everyone knows about them. Everyone knows about Lamar Jackson. He's going to get tested this year. And one of the teams to test him are going to be the Pittsburgh Steelers. I like the Steelers to win the AFC North. I like the Steelers on the over in terms of win total. I like the Steelers as one of the plays, right? You want to have a betting portfolio. I like the Steelers, given the leverage you're getting, as one of the teams that you want to pick on a future to win the Super Bowl. But understand when I say that, we're certainly going to have other teams, including the Baltimore Ravens, to win the Super Bowl, right? You want to have elite teams that you're getting relatively good odds on right here, right? So you can hedge later. So if the Steelers do surprise some people and they make it deep in the playoffs, you're already taken care of on that side of the ledger. You can then fool around and put money on the team they're playing against. So you can have action on both sides of the play. I think the Steelers are a serious sleeper this year. I love the idea. Just love it. Of Ben coming back. Understand, you don't have the dynamic you're going to have in Tampa Bay. Where this is Tom Brady's first time away from home. Hasn't he played every pro game of his career? as a member of the New England Patriots. Well, this is like going away to college, right? Now he's going to wake up and he's with a new team, Tampa Bay, right? Rather than see New Englanders in the stands and kind of know the lay of the land, right? Rather than have the advantage that he had in New England of being a cold-weather quarterback and looking at a team like the Dolphins freezing to death up there in Gillette and just knowing... These guys aren't going to beat us in December with the wind and snow. But now you have Tom Brady in a warm environment with a new head coach who's telling a guy in his 40s, mid-40s, I want you to throw the ball down the field. Right? Tom's going to spend several games figuring out Bruce Arians' coaching style. Bruce is going to spend several games figuring out exactly what Tom can and can't do in his mid-40s. This is football. 
Tom's not the first great quarterback to make it into his 40s, and I'm just telling you, I saw Warren Moon fall off a cliff. Right? We've seen guys who look like they can play forever, Peyton Manning, suddenly have that neck injury. Oh, he's not the same when he comes back, right? Peyton makes the Super Bowl with the Broncos, loses it against Seattle. When he makes the Super Bowl again with the Broncos, whew, he was on fumes, wasn't he? On fumes. Wins that Super Bowl really because of his defense. Right? Tom's at that age where things start to go. And he's in a new environment. Now, Ben's a few years younger than Tom. If things start to go on Ben, just understand that his coaching staff knows him. Mike Tomlin has been with him for years. Right? The fans know him. So those games in Pittsburgh where he looks across and he's seeing some warm weather team, the Chargers or some team, and he says, there's no way these guys are going to survive this cold late November day in Pittsburgh. He can still say that this year. You got continuity with the Steelers, and that extends to the Steeler defense. I think the Steelers are a sleeper. I don't think the odds accurately reflect their chances. I think the odds are a bit too long for the Steelers right now. I think there's an opportunity for gamblers. That's how I see it. Let me hear from you. I hope you leave your comments in the comment section of this video. If there are other teams, other opportunities that you think can give us an edge on the casino, share that with the subscribers here on YouTube. Thanks for stopping by.